everyone. I'm Maximilians, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics. Money! But what is money? Where did it even come from? Can you imagine what the world would be like without money? How would people get the stuff they need? Well, this exact thing happened a long, long time ago. About 3,000 years ago, people used to barter for all the things they needed. What do you think barter means? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh? You. You there in the t-shirt. Did you say that barter means to trade? That's right! Bartering means trading one good or service for another. Okay, now picture this. You're at the lunch table with your friends. You have gummy bears for dessert, but you're really sick of gummy bears. Your friend Zoe has Oreos. You ask Zoe if you can trade your gummy bears for her Oreos. She agrees. That's bartering. Bartering is based on an exchange between two people, and it requires what's called a double coincidence of wants. Now, that's a fancy way of saying that what one person wants to buy is exactly what the other person wants to sell. You wanted Oreos, and Zoe wanted gummy bears. Win-win. Now, imagine it's a new day at the old lunch table. You've got gummy bears again and are looking to trade Zoe for her Oreos. But Zoe just got new braces and isn't allowed to eat sticky candy anymore. So what can you do? Well, you could ask your buddy Aaron to trade his granola bar with you. But, ugh, it's got raisins, and you hate raisins. But Zoe loves raisins, and Aaron likes gummy bears. Hmm. So maybe Aaron would trade his granola bar for Zoe's Oreos, and then you could trade your gummy bears for Aaron's Oreos, and then... Ugh. This is becoming very complicated. Bartering can work in very small economies, like your lunch table, or long ago in very small villages. But once communities became more and more complex, it became too challenging to buy and sell all the things that people needed with only bartering. Can you guess what solved this problem? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm. <gasps> You, you in the t-shirt, you're right again. Money solved this problem. Now, at first, money wasn't like the dollar bills you see today. Now, after bartering got too complicated, people started using commodity money. Commodity money is something that has value as something other than money. Some examples of commodity money used over the years are cattle, salt, even cocoa beans. Now, for money to be used this way, whatever you use as money, it needs to be durable. It should last a long time without breaking. It should be homogeneous, which means that each unit of money should be identical. It should be portable, which means it's small enough to be carried around, and also divisible, so that you can make change. Now, can you guess what became the most widely used form of commodity money? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow! You in the t-shirt, you're on a roll today. Yes, it's gold. Gold and other precious metals, like silver, became the most widely used form of commodity money. In 600 BC, the first official currency was made by King Aliatus of Lydia. The coins were made from electrum, which is a mixture of silver and gold that occurs naturally. So... The next time you're at the lunch table and you want to trade your dessert for something else, remember what old Maximilian's here shared with you about the history of money. It started with bartering, trading one good or service for another. Bartering needed a double coincidence of wants, which is when one person wants to buy exactly what the other person has to sell. And that got really complicated. So commodity money, like gold, was used. <laughs>